I've recently been experimenting with vertical axis wind turbines that have blades that self-adjust their angle of attack. It's very difficult to look at these things and tell exactly what's happening, so I wanted to simulate them on the computer, but I couldn't find any ready-made software that could do it, so I wrote some of my own in the Java language. This video is going to show you my new software. These dots represent masses. Masses have a certain weight, or mass, a position, and a velocity. Since there's no forces working on these masses, they continue to move in a straight line. This is an example of a spring. The spring has a certain length where if you compress it, it pushes back and tries to expand and if you stretch it, it tries to pull back to its original length. This is an example of an elastic connection. It is like a rubber band. If the rubber band is slack, it doesn't have any effect on the masses. If it's pulled tight, then it acts like a spring and pulls the masses together again. When the rubber band is slack, it's a dim gray, and when it is pulling, it turns green. Now, usually you don't want your virtual experiments to go wandering off the screen, so I developed another type of node that I call the anchor. The anchor is very similar to a mass, except that it stays put and cannot be moved. Anchors show up as red dots. Up to now, all the connections have been very springy, where they would just bounce around forever. Sometimes you don't want that. So I also created a dash pot connection, which is a connection that absorbs energy. The faster the masses are moving towards or away from each other, the more energy they absorb. So in this case, I've got a spring and a dash pot uh, combined, and the dash pot eventually stops the spring's motion. Now I don't actually have a connection that's like a solid stick that doesn't compress. Uh, the reason is that causes all kinds of problems with the map. So if I want to make a rigid body, what I have to use is very stiff springs and dash pots combined, and then put triangles in the construction. And uh, the object will behave like it's a rigid body, although if you give it enough force it will deform, but that's true in real life also. If the addition of the triangles gets too visually confusing, I can always elect to make some of those components invisible. Now the last component I need for my bot model is a wing. A wing produces lift, drag, and torque. And figuring those three out in real time would be a real challenge. So I decided to take the easy way out. What I did is a very slow spin of the wing using my CFD software. And with this I made a lookup table of lift, drag, and torque that my other program could use. The wing component looks at its velocity and the velocity of the wind and calculates its angle of attack. Then it looks in the lookup table to figure out what the lift and drag would be. All three forces are scaled by air velocity squared. This is an example of a wing at the end of a rubber band. The lookup table I'm currently using is for the NACA0012, but I could create a lookup table for any wing shape. Finally, I was able to construct the model of my bot. The mass at the end of the long stick is a kilogram, which is about 2.2 pounds. The blade is only about a foot long, and the wind is 15 miles an hour. Um, this bot does a really good job of accelerating that mass pretty quickly. I have the ability to log various physical properties of the model as it's running. For instance, I can get the velocity of a node, or the force on a spring, or the length of a spring. 
angle of attack of a wing. So I'm hoping this will be a very useful tool for analyzing this type of bot in the future. For the rest of this video, I'm just going to let this thing spin up to its maximum speed, and you can see how the wing adjusts as it does it.